Today, guys, we got to talk about Sega, okay? One of our favorite topics. We got to talk about Sega, and more importantly, working for Sega, guys. Today on the channel, I'm going to be reading you guys some stories and bad reviews for Sega of America. Now, in our last video, guys, we talked about Sonic Satam making a comeback, man. And you guys came out in droves, man. Shadow was a very pleased hedgehog, okay? You guys really came out in support of the new season of Sonic Satam. Now, one of you, a lot of things, well, one thing you guys really stressed to me was that Chaos, it's only a fan project. And I realized that, but still, it's still a project that fans like us are working hard on. And I'm very excited to see where Sonic Satam Season 3 or Session Season 3 goes. So I'm pretty hyped, guys. I'm always hyped for gaming projects, Sonic projects. So pretty cool stuff, man. Pretty cool stuff, guys. So my opinion on that is simply I'm excited, and I know you guys are too. And thanks for coming out to the video, man. It's pretty cool. So let's get to the Sega of America reviews, guys. So right now I'm on Glassdoor, and this should give you guys some insight into would you ever want to work for Sega? We always talk about the games, but we never, we, but we never talk about Sega the company, and I got a very, very good point I want to make about Sega halfway through the video, so you don't want to miss it, man. You'll miss it faster than Shadow missed the fourth Chaos in row. All right, guys, so let's read this. Let's read this. So, we on glass door right now, guys, and the first question it asks me, it says, is this your company? Um, Mr. Glassdoor or Glassdoor? No, okay, no, okay. This is Shadow's company. No, I do not own Sega, okay? If I did own Sega, we probably would get good Sonic games. Sonic fans, I'm very sorry. I, it's, it's so easy these days, man. It's so easy. So, anyway, let's read this. So, this first review is from September the 4th of 2008, and it says, Genuinely good, but needs a revolution in quality. I think all Sonic fans can attest for this, can vouch for all Sega games need to be, uh, need a revolution in and quality okay now it says i have been working at sega of america pros co-workers are generally great folks at sega it can be frustrating working for a japanese company due to communication and culture issues but the u.s office continues to show success in growing a western centric video game development strategy cons no stock or profit share means that there is really no hope of hitting a jackpot like Devil May Cry, Dante, and Virgil, even if you make a hit game. There is no incentive to pitch original projects since Sega will not give up any financial reward to internal entrepreneur. So, what this is saying is, if you're in America and you have any ideas on Sonic or how to develop the series or maybe do what uh, Tyson Heston and Christian Whitehead, they came to Sonic, they came from... They came from American perspective and gave Sonic Mania a lot of uh, a lot of good good ideas. So if you work for Sega of America and you got any ideas, you know you're pretty much not getting your voice heard, which is pretty awful. Okay. So right here it says good benefits and people, but poor management and consistently bad development track record. Good benefits and good people. That sounds like a nice lady, okay? I'm just saying, man. That sounds like a really good friend, guys. A friend that gives you good benefits and good people? That sounds like someone I like to keep around, okay? Maybe that's why Sonic keeps Sally around, man. Good benefits and she's good goddamn people. Anyway, let's keep going, guys. This person says, I worked at Sega of America, okay? The pros. Sega has great properties. The benefits are very, very good. Some great people on staff. Lots of young employees in their 20s and 30s, guys. Cons. Poor track record of developing quality games. Game quality is consistently subpar. This. This has got to be probably one of the most truest statements, man. When it comes to company policies and company reviews it's always he said she said it's always it's always he says she says and you know who said this and who said that but one thing we can actually attest for or vouch for is that 
Sega has a poor track record developing quality titles and game quality is consistently subpar. And we got pretty much proof, okay? The proof is in the pudding, all right? Just look at Sonic's track record of video games. There it is right there. It also says, little oversight of bad employees. Dysfunctional relationships with other business units creates lots of friction and daily work and long-term planning. Leadership is not consistent in its decision making regarding personnel with good employees fired and promoted and bad employees promoted and fired. Lack of healthy questioning of process and decision. Advice to management. Listen to the people at the bottom, which is very true, guys. If you're on top of something and you're the leader, you need to listen to the people at the bottom, man. If there's a certain situation and you are at, you are on top of someone, you definitely got to listen to the bottom, man. You got to see their point of view. You got to understand how to make the bottom happy, guys. This is sounding very weird and endo endo ish but it is what it is, man. You have to make the bottom happy, guys. When you're on the top, you got to do what you got to do to please the bottom, gentlemen. That is advice for your future relationships, man. Listen to Sega reviewers, guys. This is real life stuff right here, man. So one thing I want to make clear about Sega, guys, is there's always this issue, okay? There's always jokes and there's always underlying problems between the Sega and the Sega and the Sonic fan base. And this problem is Sonic games are universally, you know, considered to be subpar. I mean, there there is no there is no type of ignoring this. There is no glass. There is no blinding light. There is no type of sweeping it under the rug. Sonic fans and Sega fans know that Sonic games are hit or miss most of the time. So there's always running jokes between Sega fans and the quality of Sonic games. But one of the big things that I want to address that we never seem to talk about that is the fact that Sega, okay, Sega might have problems with Sonic games. Sega might have problems with quality. But one thing Sega does better than pretty much every company I've seen or most companies is that Sega is very in tune with the fans, okay? Sega is very, very, very kind to Sonic fans. Now, let me explain, okay? Out of all the companies on YouTube and all the companies in the industry as far as video games go, Sega is very lenient when it comes to their content, okay? For example, Kobani Maru 456 or Kobe 456, Kobe used Sonic um Sonic and the Secret Rings, one of the stage intros for his theme and never got copyrighted, okay? Kobe used one of the songs from Sonic Secret Rings, aka Unplayable. The game is literally not playable, if you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we did some reviews on that game anyway, but Kobe had the song as his YouTube intro and was never copyrighted. Fast forward to today, guys. Sega allows gamers to freely use Sega footage. You can use Sega music in your outros, in your intros, you can even use Sega music in your YouTube videos, and Sega will not copyright strike you, okay? Unlike Nintendo and Capcom and other companies, Nintendo will destroy you. Nintendo will flag you faster than Mushroom Dash 1 Dash 1 Mario World, man. Literally, you'll be you'll be flagged in like three minutes for using any Nintendo music. Like almost three seconds, okay? It's like you're out of time, okay? That's how serious Nintendo is with copyrights. But Sega themselves is very, very lenient. Another thing I want to add, guys, is as far as fan games go and creative content and all types of other videos, Sega is perfectly okay with people using Sega assets to make for Sonic fan games, you know? Like Sonic Utopia and sonic world adventure and hell even sonic mania itself you know so sega themselves is very 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 lenient and they let the fans enjoy making sonic games and being creative in which other companies like nintendo would not allow that i mean look at pokemon you can't even make a pokemon fan game or game freak will destroy you okay 
faster than a fire gym versus a water gym, all right? That's just how bad it is. So despite everyone's bad opinion of Sega games and Sonic games, you got to give Sega credit. Sega is very, very honest and very, very loving towards the fans, man. Anyway, guys, what are you guys' thoughts on this whole Sega thing, man? Is Sega a good place to work, man? Now, keep in mind, these were the bad reviews. I'm sure they're good reviews, but I just want to give you guys, I guess, a, I guess, a look at the dark side of Sega. But more importantly, I wanted to defend Sega for once. Instead of bashing on Sonic games, guys, we got to look at Sega in a more, a more open-minded approach. So, anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on all this, guys. I am Lost Cast, and if you enjoy this video for any damn reason, make sure you guys subscribe for more gaming news, stories, reviews, or all types of other game content I have planned.